Okay, this video is going to uh, demonstrate how to use a for loop. So we have been doing while loops up to this point. However, now we're going to learn how to use a for loop. And um, so before we get started on the example, uh, the thing we want to uh, look at here is um, we want to add some something to the note. So up here, what you want to do is to indicate when when to use a for loop. So basically, your for loops are going to be used when you want a predetermined definite number of loop iterations. When you want a predetermined definite number of loop iterations. Up to this point, the programmer, for instance, does not know, in our first example, the programmer who wrote this did not know when the balance, the investment amount, was going to reach the target. He didn't know, he, he, the programmer didn't know when 1,000 was going to become 2,000. So, the number of iterations, a number of times that the loop was executed, was unknown to the programmer. And that we said that's an indefinite loop. Well, a for loop is going to be when the programmer goes, I would like this to, to iterate five times. I would like the loop body to be executed six times or 12 times or 13. So a specific number, a predetermined number, something predetermined, a definite number. So five means five. It's definite. And loop iterations, of course, hopefully we remember an iteration is when the body of the loop is executed. All right. So as we look at this, we're going to compare this to a uh, while loop. So in this situation, what's going to happen? in a for loop, um, programmers like this because it, what it does is it puts three elements of a loop into one line of code. And in a while loop, there are three elements of a loop that are on three different lines of code. But it puts those three inside one or in one line, and so what happens is we say that um, this variable here. Now, by the way, this we're going to talk about this more, but we're going to go LCV, which means a loop control variable, is initialized. And it, we, if you remember, that is that means that it's been declared and it's been assigned a value. So it's been assigned one. And so we, instead of doing that outside the loop, now you can do this outside the loop. You can declare it out there and then just go, uh, just go, so you go int count is assigned one. Now what we could do is we could have int count in front of the, before the loop and then just say count is assigned one in here. Now the problem is we do need this to be courier New, there we go. All right, so what we have here is we have the loop control variable, which we'll talk about more, is initialized. It's given a value. And then in this line here, we say that the loop control variable is tested. There's a test going on, and or it's checked. So the Boolean expression is checked with that loop control variable. And in the same way, that's going to happen here. All right, and then um, the other thing that happens is that the loop in the while loop is that the loop control variable might get up well would get updated so um, 
that is going to happen in the same line as well. Oops, what am I doing? All right, so there we go. So now those three parts of a loop, which we'll talk about later, that these are going to always be, these are going to be in every loop. You're going to have initial, the loop control variable initialized. It's going to be tested, and it's going to be updated. Um, and so let's see how that works then. We're going to have a brace, curly brace here, and then we're going to indent. And so we're, let's just take this system dot out, and we're going to make it this. And so um, then we're going to write the, now the count plus plus is already up here, so we're not going to write it here in the body. So the update happens in this line, in the initial line of a for loop or a for statement, but for loop. So we're going to, um, what's going to happen here is it's important to recognize that you have three sections. And so you have, um, uh, updated. so you have three sections that going on here. But how, what's the order in which they happen? Now the order is going to be the same. So. Here it's initialized before anything else. Okay, that's not going to work. Well, that's weird. And um, so then, when it in the initial line of the while statement, then it's going to be tested in that Boolean expression. Well, here's the Boolean expression right here. So it starts out by making count equal to 1, and then it's testing it is 1 less than 4, which it is. This is where you got to be careful. So now we're going to print or ex execute the body of the loop. Because remember that if the test is true, the body of the loop is executed. And so we jump in here, and it says box count. We're going to print that. And so um, maybe I'll just do it down here. So box, and then count is one. So box one, and then ln goes down to the next line. All right. So then, it hits the end being brace, which is end of loop. Go back to four to get updated. So initialized, tested, and updated. Initialized, tested, and then updated. And so count becomes two now. And now we're going to go back to the test. Because after it gets updated in the while statement, when it was done, it went back up to while to get tested. So we're still doing the same order. Everything is in the same order. It's just in a different look, and this is more compact. And this is uh, this is why programmers like this because it's easier to work with. So now, because two is less than four, it's going to go back into the loop. And so it goes back into the loop. It's going to print box now. Count is two, so it's actually going to print box two. And then it goes here and goes back to four and to get updated. And then that becomes three and then it gets tested. So is the three less than four? And this is, of course, be the last time through. And so it'll print box three. And then when it goes back up, then it gets updated to four now, and so now it's four, and then four is what causes the loop to stop. You have to just imagine if you didn't update, if count never increased, it would never be large enough 
to stop the loop. So now this stops the loop and it kicks out of there and there's nothing else left in the program. All right, so that's um, that's basically how it goes. Um, if you if you want numbers um, in there, then you've got um, you know it goes one, two, three, four, five, and then it repeats that six, seven, eight. And, and notice that it never comes back to here. Once it does that the first time, it's done with that. It doesn't use that anymore. All right, so that's how it goes. And now you can do the rest of these problems, one through five. And that'll do it.